Hello everyone and welcome back to my heavenly babies. So today I'm back with something completely different. Normally I do my Munchkin Mondays, but today I want to do a hashtag in honor of D over at the Baby Patch. I would have had that linked right up there on the screen and I will also link it in my information box. Please go check her out. Not only does she have the most beautiful, kind soul, the most beautiful, sweet lady ever, she has beautiful content and beautiful babies. So please go check her out, uh, subscribe to her channel. She is a dedicated subscriber as well and will watch your videos too. And oh, I hope one day I get to meet you, Dee. I really do. I really do. I would love to meet you. But anyways, what she does on Mondays is whatever she wants Mondays. So I'm going to share my beautiful cabbage patch with you guys. I've talked about it in other videos, but this baby here is 42 years old. I got this baby when I was five so it was my fifth birthday is when I got her and she has been through everything with me. She is my best friend and knows my deepest, darkest secrets, let me tell you. So this girl deserves a huge spotlight. I'm going to do a spotlight on her. I want to change her into an outfit. It's not a Cabbage Patch outfit. This she's wearing is, but it needs to be washed. She was pretty dusty sitting up on that shelf. So I want to um, just clean her up really good and wash her outfit. So I'm going to put her in a regular outfit here, just a regular, um, you know, um, baby outfit here and also a little diaper on her. I'll put a little diaper on her. But this girl deserves a spotlight. Uh, she still is in such good condition for 42 years and the hell I put this little girl through. I mean, I've even given her a bunch of baths when I was younger. Uh, she has a full cloth body and everything with the, um, you know, the, the head, um, of course, can get wet, but she's got yarn hair and all of that. Um, but yeah, I just want to share her with you. I had many cabbage patches, but she was my most favorite. And then I also saved one other one was the very first corn silk. And I'll share that with you guys. But this here is Sandy. So meet Sandy. And I'm going to go ahead and read the word first. And then I'm going to change her and do, like I said, a big giant spotlight on her for whatever I want Mondays. So you guys just look at Sandy. This is my beautiful, beautiful cabbage patch. Love this girl more than anything in the world. I really do. She's been through a lot. She surely has. So we're going to go ahead and read first. And we are on September 11th. And that is in life's dark hours. God is our refuge and strength and ever uh, present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. That's Psalms 46, 1 through 2. And let me tell you, I've been uh, in Psalms. I've been reading Psalms. I'm almost done with it because I'm doing that one-year challenge. And boy, is Psalms a good book. It really is. I've read the Bible through quite a few times, but Psalms really hit me this time. It really did. That one in Romans are my favorite. Now, this goes on to say, the horror of what took place on September 11th, 20, or 2001, will remain stamped on our memories for generations to come. Who can ever forget the sight of those hijacked airplanes slamming into the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center and the side of the Pentagon? Who can forget the courageous men and women who stopped another plane from reaching its destination and the hundreds of brave emergency personnel, um, uh, personnel who lost their lives in the line of duty? I have asked myself hundreds of times why God sometimes allows evil to flourish and I don't have the full answer. Evil is real. However, and we ignore it at our prevail. However, and we ignore it at our prevail. Evil is so real that it costs God's son his life. But I don't know this, but I, but I do know this. Even in life's darkest hours, God is our refuge and our strength. Not money, not military, um, yeah, uh, not military might, not diplomacy, not human cleverness, but God. As you reflect on what happened on that September 11th, is God your refuge and strength? He can be as you open your heart and life to Jesus Christ. Boy, I didn't even think about that today, you guys. So, is, today is September 11th. Um, I pre-record these videos, so that's the only reason I wasn't thinking about that. But when you see this, it is September 11th. So let's honor all of those um, you know, that lost their lives on September 11th of 2001. What a sad tragedy that happened. But, you know, we have tragedies tragedies that go on all over the world. 
and all the time. And if you read um, in Matthew, all of 24, it was all predicted that these things would happen and go on when things were drawing near to Jesus's return. But do we ever think about um, the evil that the, the, the cost, I mean, think, like I said here, evil is so real that it cost God's son in his life, you know, his life. He took on the sins of the world for us so that we could have eternal life. You know, we think about all the bad things that happened, but because of all this bad, it caused Jesus to take the cross on for us, you know, and we have to really think that even though we live in an evil world, uh, there still is great people out there. There is still great things and there's still a lot to enjoy and to remember where we're going if you have your salvation. We're heading straight to heaven. We don't have to face it anymore after our time is up or Jesus returns before your time is up. We will get out of this evil world and one day it's going to be a brand new heaven, brand new earth where Satan cannot touch us anymore. It's because Satan has a huge pull on this world. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He puts evil thoughts into people's heads and that's why we have bombings and plane crashes and you know people destroying people and you know just killings going on everywhere. Um, it's all the devil, the work of the devil, you know, and it's all predicted in the Bible that this would all go on. And we just need to be kind and loving souls to everybody. Um, you know, it's, it's important just, you know, I, I watch, um, uh, in the, I think it's called in the cradle. I believe I, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. I'll put it up on the screen. I love at the end how she always says the smallest kind of act, you know, act of kindness doesn't go unnoticed. It doesn't. So just try to be as kind and loving as you can because we do live in a hard world. We really do. But know as a Christian that, you know, where we're going to go when it's over. But look at, because of the world we live in, like I said, Jesus had to die on a cross for us. He didn't have to, but God wanted him to because he wanted all of us who he loved very much, like in John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So this isn't our permanent home. Our permanent life and, and greatness is all in heaven. And so remember that even though we live in a very evil world, we will be gone and out of this one day. And then we'll come back to the earth one day and Satan will be chained to hell forever if you read Revelations. Um, and he'll never be able to hurt us again. And we will have a new heaven and a new earth. And no more pain, no more sorrow, no more sicknesses, nothing. Nothing will ever be the same. But yes, this is a tragedy, and so my hearts go out to those who lost loved ones on that day. We'll never forget that. We never will. And you know, and have we let it destroy us? No. Uh, we're a strong nation, and we stand together in power. Um, so let's do that and, and continue to hold God in our hearts and know that God was there through that whole thing. But evil does go on because of the evil world we live in. Things got to happen. Do you think God can just let the world just, you know, continue to do what it's doing even though he sees all this evil because he offers us a kingdom you guys a kingdom but he sees such an evil world that goes on and i know it hurts and destroys god so much but god foreseen all this happening and so he had to come up with a plan to save those who would you know want heaven want their salvation and so just remember that when things are bad there is good coming there is good coming we got heaven coming uh, the wisdom for today is we place our trust in you, Lord. You don't weaken in age. Cover in the face of evil or worry about the days to come. While we believe in the reality of evil, we also believe that you have overcome the world. Boy, never forget that, that God has overcome the world. Even in uh, life's darkest hours, like this was called, God has overcome the world. It is still his world. He is still in charge and things happen and he can stop it at any time. And um, he cannot stop it at any time because of the evil world we live in. So just remember that. Let's just be kind and loving and gentle and sweet. Uh, Dee always says such kind things at the end of her videos as well. And, you know, and I try to tell you guys, be kind, be loving to everybody. Um, don't have that heart like that. Don't have that evil in your heart. Don't let the devil steer you in the wrong direction. Let him steer you. Let God steer you in the right direction by reading his word and, you know, following God's word. Honoring, obeying, and following it. And like I always say, start your day, go through your day, and end your day with Life's Manual. The Holy Bible, read it, study it, get a great personal relationship with Jesus, but also honor, obey, and live by the word. You know, live by it. And that's going to help you get through trials and tribulation and hard times like September 11th. You know, why do you think a lot of us got through it? Because of God. There is nothing we can't get through without his strength. And we will always overcome because God has overcome the world. So just remember that. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I hope that you are, um, you know, remembering those that we lost on September 11th. We'll never forget that. Remember that. 
and um, just, you know, continue to live your life to the fullest with God. I don't know how anybody lives without God. I always say that. I have no idea because I know I couldn't. All right, Sandy, the spotlight is on you, beautiful girl, my beautiful, beautiful girl. All right, like I said, I got her for my fifth birthday. This was back in 1980. So Cabbage Patch had not been released yet, but they were talked about in the uh, late 70s. And so this one here is not an authentic um, Cabbage Patch. She doesn't have the Xavier Roberts on the butt. My mom got her through a lady that was making them. And then, of course, my uh, corn silk one, that is authentic. That one is authentic, and it's the first um, corn silk one, and I will share that one with you guys. But it doesn't matter. I love this girl with everything in my heart, and she has been through everything. I took her to school. I took her to bed. I put her in the bath with me. We took baths together. We slept together. We went to school together. Everywhere I went, this little girl went with me, and she knows everything. Even as I got older and didn't play with her anymore, she always was right there in my bedroom, on my bed, and always with me, always. You know, it didn't matter how old I got, and even at my age now, at 47, I love this little girl. I do. I look up sometimes and I look at her and I think, wow, she knows so much about me and um, has been, you know, like I said, my best friend. So we're going to change this little girl and just go over how special she is. I'll never forget the day I got this beautiful little girl. So we're going to just kind of tilt her back like this so you guys can still see her good. I hope she's lined up good. I want you to see her face good instead of being this side because I won't be able to turn her head. You also see Minnie back there. Hi, Minnie. Hi. That's my pretty girl too. We need to do a, do a spotlight on you. We'll do a whatever Monday on you. <laughs> um, but there she is. Um, let's kind of, oh, you can see everything. Okay, good. All right. So let me talk about her, Sandy. So my fifth birthday, and we're going to take this stuff off because I'm going to wash this whole outfit. Uh, but anyway, she's still in really good condition. She's got problems here with the stitching and I'm going to work on that and fix it. But come on, the girl's 42 years old. So that's pretty good. This side's perfect. I don't know if you can see that perfect. The hand's perfect on this side, hand's perfect on this side. This one got messed up, though, because I gave her too many baths. I did that too many times. So I'm going to fix that. I definitely am. I'm going to, um, you know, take out the stitch there and fix it. I've already tried to a few times, but I got to fix this little girl. But it doesn't matter. I mean, her yarn hair is still so beautiful. I have it in the braids. I braided it many years ago or whatever and left it in this outfit that she's wearing that I got for her. It was a, a new Cabbage Patch outfit. When the Cabbage Patches came back out again, I think in the 2000s, um, I got her a new outfit because her outfit was green. She came with green. She's a little, um, if you see her, she's darker skin. She's like a little Mexican girl. She's an ethnic baby. And, you know, I love that about her with her green eyes and her dark brown yarn hair. Um, so she had a green outfit on. I do remember that. I'll never forget that either. She had little green shoes, little white socks, and a green outfit. It was so pretty. And I always would put that on her. She wore that pretty much till she wore it out uh, because I didn't get, you know, I was only five. I didn't get extra clothes and things for her. Oh, she does have a diaper on. Okay. Um, but I didn't get extra clothes and things for her till I got older. You know, then I could buy my own when I worked and stuff like that. But you see, she's got a rip under the armpit there. I do got a stitch and so that a rip there. Um, so, but I mean, 42 years, what do you expect, right? And me being a seamstress, you know, knowing how to stitch and sew, I don't know why I haven't fixed her yet. She's tore here. I guess I'm starting to see all the damage to her now because um, it's been many years since I've, you know, taken her out of this. Um, and I do remember now the things she had wrong with her. But I would say she's in good condition. I had to stitch her here. I don't know if you guys can see that. I had to stitch her there. Um, this side, again, because I took her in the bath so many times. But I think that she looks pretty good. She's got a big tear right here. We're going to have to stitch and sew that on the inner leg there. Um, and, you know, I don't want to take out the original stuffing in her and all that. So I just want to stitch her up. She actually has a Cabbage Patch diaper on. That is a Cabbage Patch diaper. Wow. Um that is really neat. I don't know how I had a Cabbage Patch diaper, but you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put a different one on her because it's really old. As you see, it just tore apart, but it was a Cabbage Patch diaper, so we'll change that. But I'm going to show you. Um, there's her belly button, but you see she doesn't have the, you know, crack like she's supposed to and the Xavier Roberts because she was just a, um, you know, a person was just making them. A lady was making them, I guess. My mom said, boy, I just want to stitch and sew her right now. I didn't realize she has all these issues, but we're going to go ahead and just get her dressed and talk about her. But yeah, she has been through everything with me. Uh, my saddest days, I would turn to Sandy. And um, I named her Sandy because she didn't come, of course, with any paperwork because she wasn't an Xavier Roberts. So she didn't have a name, a birth certificate or anything that with her. I do remember that when I got her. Um, so yeah, she just was, you know, I, I named her myself. Well, I named her Sandy because I love the name Sandy. I think um, 
I don't even know why I named her that. I want to say because of Grease. And I liked Sandy from Grease. But I'm trying to remember if I would have been watching that at five. It must have been because I think that's why I named her that. Um, if not, I don't know why. I just like the name Sandy, I guess. But I do believe, I do remember back. Um, it's vaguely in my head that that's the reason I named her that. But this is Sandy. And she, like I said, has gotten me through such hard times in my life, even when I was older. You know, I would just hug on to her and it would just make me feel better to hug her and love on her. And, you know, just because, you know, she was my favorite and always will be my favorite doll as far as, you know, outside of the Reborns and the uh, Silicones and all of that. She's just going to be number one always, you know, even above them. Uh, she's going to be number one because she's been with me for 42 years, you know, and I will never get rid of her. And um, I would like to actually box her up in a glass box, uh, fix her, clean her the best that I can, and then box her in a, um, you know, a glass box and then just to never take her out again. And if I share her, um, I mean, she could come out, but you know what I mean? A glass box where she will um, remain clean and everything and dust free and all that, because of course... She's not dust free sitting out like this. So, but I did tell my son, I told my son when I pass, I want him to take her. And he said he definitely will because he knows what this doll means to me. So I said, but by then, hopefully I will have her in a glass box. If not, I told him to get her in a glass box. And he said he will. And I said, um, you know, if he has a daughter, I mean, I guess he could let her play with it. But he said, no, I wouldn't do that, mom. This doll means too much to you. I wouldn't want her to get ruined anymore. And I would just keep her put away. So I only have a son. Um, so, of course, I would have gave it to a daughter, but Dylan was my firstborn as well. So I want him to have her, and he said he definitely wants her, um, you know, put away in glass like that, um, just to have something that he knew meant so much to me. Boy, this fits her good. What size is this? It's not even, it's a baby outfit. It's a Carter's newborn. A Carter's newborn, and it fits her. That's amazing. And I love the little sock shoes with it, because it reminds me of something Cab or, uh, yeah, Cabbage Patch would wear. And it's got the green to match the red and green. So it's a white outfit. It's got the red flowers through it and the greenery through it as well, the leaving. And then this big um, satin bow on it, a red bow. And then I loved these socks and shoes with it because it just matched so good with it, you know. So I thought it'd be perfect. Then her hair, we're just going to go ahead and pull these out. I hope I have binders in her hair. Do I? Yes. Okay, because I'm going to put these in, these clips, just to match the little outfit. I got these little clips here. I'm going to put these in just to match now because, of course, I always wanted her to match. She never can be unmatching. So we'll see if we can get these in. These binders are probably so old, I don't want them to snap. Um, maybe I can just stick it through her yarn, her hair, you know what I mean? Let's see, I'll just kind of stick it through. Well, no, that won't work either. So I'm going to stick it through this. I'm sorry, you guys, I'm trying to figure this out. Yeah, we'll just go like that and stick it through. So she can be matching still um, because this went with that outfit. And I'll eventually put that outfit back on her. Because um, I like her in that little outfit. Or maybe get her a new Cabbage Patch outfit. Since there is Cabbage Patches out there. That I actually can get her, you know, a brand new outfit. Before I box her up and put her away. I'd like to have a new outfit for her. A new Cabbage Patch outfit. And new shoes and all of that for her. But look, that's darling. Look how cute that is, you guys. With the little ribbons in the back with her hair. I know I braided that probably about 15 years ago. And I've never taken it out of the braids. But yeah, I would like to fix her up. Because... She needs to be fixed up. She definitely, I didn't realize, had so many tears and everything on her. So I'm going to fix her up first, get her a new outfit, and then I'm going to put her away in a glass box. I can still share her because she can come out of the glass box, but stick her in there. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a sealed box, you know, something sealed where um, she won't ever be able to come out of that box because then, you know, I don't know. Or if it just be a box that she can come out of, I'm not sure. But, you know, regardless, she's. I want her in a glass box because, like I said, today when I took her out, she was so dusty and I thought, oh my goodness. But she is, like I said, my best friend, a sweetheart. Um, my favorite Cabbage Patch because it was the first. She is not authentic. Um, but like I said, back then, they didn't have them when I was turning five. But I knew about them coming out. And so my mom found a lady that was just making them. Um, and she got it through her. And it doesn't matter to me. Um, authentic or not, she means the world to me. And I'm glad to have her. And I'm glad to share her with you guys for whatever I want Monday. I just wanted to do something different in honor of Dee. But also get a chance to share my beautiful Cabbage Patch, my beautiful Sandy. Um, and I just love her. Like I said, she's been through everything with me. And boy, if you could ask her anything, she would definitely um, tell you. Uh, well, maybe she wouldn't, right? You'd keep those secrets. <laughs> um, but if you could get it out of her, she'd tell you the, you know, the 
trials that I've been through in my life, and she's been through them with me. The outfit she was wearing is really cute. It is a Cabbage Patch outfit. It's purple, uh, check uh, with lavender and regular uh, purple, and then it's got the purple here with the butterflies on it, and then a butterfly right here done in that, and then the matching. These were the bows that came with it, and so there was an orange one and a pink one, but they match with the outfit and the purple shoes and the purple socks came with it. But I'm going to wash all that up because it's all dirty, so I'm going to get that all washed up. Hopefully you guys seen all of that and the little bows for her hair. I'm going to get it cleaned up. But yeah, she is a special girl. Mwah! And she knows that I love her, that she means a lot to me. She just was with me through everything. She really was, but she definitely needs to be cleaned up. Um, I would like to stitch and sew her really nice first, and then I'd like to uh, bathe her. Um, you know, I, I know um, Belinda bathed her cabbage patches through the washer. Maybe I could do it on a delicate cycle. Um, without ruining her hair. I'm not sure. I might have to just wash her up myself. I don't know. We'll figure something out. But after I stitch and sew her, once she gets all stitched up, then I want to clean her up, get her a new outfit, and then get her in a nice glass box. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, meeting Sandy, the love of my life. Uh, she is 42 years old. That's right, 42 years old. And it would have been for my fifth birthday. So it would be 43 years on December 14th. That's my birthday. She'll be 43 years old then. So she's got a birthday coming up too. But all right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked um, the reading today. Remember, we live, we do have evil in our world, but know that God has still overcome it and we will get through all of it and just be kind and loving to everybody. And thank you, Dee, for hosting these um, Whatever We Want Mondays. I was quite happy to do this in honor of you. And uh, thank all of you ladies out there, all the ladies and men out there in the Dolly community. Thank you for being so kind and loving. And uh, I love each and every one of you. Sandy will blow you guys a kiss. Mwah. Don't know if you guys will get to see her again, if I'll ever bring her on again. Um, maybe after I get her fixed up in a new outfit, I'll bring her on again. Um, but I do want to get her in a glass box. And then I'm going to blow you a kiss. Mwah. I love all of you guys very much. But remember, God loves you the most. So give your whole heart to God. Everybody take care. God bless. And I will see each and every one of you in my very next upload.